Hello, and welcome back to Learning with Lee. In today's episode, we're going to go back to our IDE in order to focus on a few more development topics and shy away a bit from some of the math conversations that we've been having over the past couple episodes. In particular, we're going to be focusing on the ternary operator that we covered a little while ago, as well as what is known as flow control. And the ternary operator was the first example of flow control that I've shown you in this series. And what flow control is, is that normally your program's going to go in, it's going to execute this instruction, followed by this instruction, followed by this instruction. And what flow control lets you do is go, okay, in certain circumstances, I want this one to be performed. Alternatively, I might want this one down here to be performed. Or it might just be that I want this one to be performed in some cases, and I want not to be performed in other cases. So it allows your program to sort of have these different branches and paths that it can follow as it heads down through here. It doesn't have to follow a single set path. It can change depending on what the state of your system is. For example, to use the ternary operator from earlier, I could do something such as, in case I wanted to say, is E true or not, I could go with copying this line up here and putting it in here, as well as also over here. And then rather than having D's in there, obviously, just put in true if E is true and false if E is false. So as if we have a bit more of a descriptive output than just zero or one. And then build it, run it, and lets us see that E is false. And the major thing that it did there is that it prevented this potential code path from being go down, and instead it chose to go down this one based upon E. Although the ternary operator can be used in order to do the flow control operations that I've shown here, typically happens to have a different statement that is used for flow control, and that is the if-else statement. The if-else statement is just done by, as you might guess, writing if. Now, this happens to, similar to something like main, have a pair of parentheses after it, and then you have else, which does not have a pair of parentheses after it. And by default, what each of these does is, if this is true, so if I go say E here, and then I could do something like this, put that down here, and put this down in the else, it works the same way that this ternary operator did, in which if E is true, then it's going to output this statement within here. And if E is false, meaning that it won't head into this branch, but instead will choose this branch, then it will perform this instruction. Now, the important thing to remember is that you remember how I brought up scope earlier. Scope and braces do one additional thing beyond just providing scope. Braces allow you to basically have multiple statements that act as a single one. So I could have this do something like true, and I could have it see out E, have it, let's even say, see out B and see out C, just so that we can see all of the things involved in that and it allows this to be treated as basically a single statement. Because normally after an if clause, you can only have one statement similar to how I have down here with the else. However, by having these braces here, these effectively combine these multiple statements into a single statement that if can use. It's also considered good coding practice in general, that even if you only have a single statement, to put your braces around that statement in an if else or in any other form of clauses or statements we'll be getting into that have a similar pattern to this in the future. Just because it's a matter of, if I say have this if-else stuff here, and I had another set of if-else down here, I'm not certain what necessarily these might be, but it's a matter of by having this down here, if I didn't have this here, it's a question of, can you really trust me that this if and this else weren't supposed to be included as part of this else in here. So it's just better in general to have these pair of braces around here so that it's clear as to what is being performed in your branches and what's outside of your branches. So after negating E so as it will end up in this branch here, you can see our output down here has all of these in it. Now if I quickly reverse that and then build it and run it again, you can see that now it only has this false from having this branch ran. And that's the major benefit to flow control. One of the things you can actually do with this now is if, as well as else, both require a statement after them. So what you can do is you can actually stick an additional if-else statement in here, so as that it's a matter of, okay, this if and this else need to be basically grouped together. 
Now, what if I say do add an if here and then add another else down here? And I could say in this one here, D. And what I can output there is just saying D is true. And what this allows for then is that if E is true, we enter this branch. If E is false and D is true, we enter this branch because the only way we make it past this option is if E is false. Because if he's true, we'll hit this, and then we will never hit any of these else's. It's effectively the same as if I did something like this and D. However, because of the fact that E is up here, I do not need this portion here. If I wanted to check if E was true and D also is true, I would have to stick within here if D in order to do something such as output E and D are both true. And then I can do something like this, build it, run it. Let's just say E equals the reverse of what it currently does, then build it and run it. Then we get these. However, as you can see, D is not currently true. So what we could do is we could just E equals not D. So as it basically negates itself, and then we have this because it managed to go down through these branches. And part of the reason why I said that to always include these braces around these, even if it's only a single statement, is that you could do something such as right here, and this would be really confusing. I'm going to specify right now, this is precisely why we use braces. So if I just were to get rid of those, do that, and then toss on an else, you'd notice how the IDE automatically put this on this layer. But it's a matter of, and I could just do this and just say E is true, and let's just go with only E is true. And get rid of this line so that you can see us actually hit it when we run it. It ends up going down this branch, but it's really confusing because we have this if, this else, and then we have these else ifs and else downs here. So it's much, much, much cleaner if you just add in these braces here so as you can see where the scope is supposed to be. So as you can see that this if and this else are not at the same level and same layer as these are. If you really wanted to even, you could do something such as do this. Get rid of that and do this. However, then this if is going to actually correspond with this else if and this else. So if E is false, that we can easily do by switching the sign back to how it originally was, none of these are going to get output. So if I build it, I run it. Note how our last line is this one here, outputting false for this. Whereas if I do something such as that, we're going to get out the second false down here from this line. So that's why you always include these braces, because otherwise it can get really confusing and really complex for some of the more complicated logic we'll be dealing with in the future. To get a bit further into what you can include within these, you can really include pretty much anything you wanted that results in a Boolean output. Now, because this happens to be C++, you could even just input something such as if C. And because C is non-zero, we would automatically wind up in here due to what we covered earlier. I could do something such as if B greater than C, and we'll just go with A greater than B, and then it can output something such as, well, let's just get rid of this section here and go with this and say that A is greater than C. Build it, run it. And because that isn't true, we wind up going down here. But you can see how this thing here can have more complicated logic statements. All that matters is that the end result of whatever statement you have in here is a Boolean. One thing that very often schools overlook telling you about is that do you want your widest Boolean in terms of the thing that is true in the largest number of cases early, or do you want it near the end? And do you want your narrowest near the beginning, i.e. the one that's true in the fewest number of cases, or near the end? And in general, what you want is you want to put your narrowest cases up at the top because very often your narrower cases are going to be subsets of some of your broader cases. And while you can then, say, with have a broad outer shell layer here, and then have a inner if-else that ends up being less broad internally. So if I did something like if B greater than C for this, and I also wanted if A greater than B, I could do that within there. Alternatively, in case I wanted specifically this case here, I might want to have this out at this layer here. 
while it's in general important to have your most narrow ones at the top so that they don't get ignored in case, let's say that I had this guy here, further along, let's just say that I did if E, the important thing here is, is that because B greater than C effectively is E, since that's what E is up here, this one here, if I actually do this correctly and do an else if here, will end up being ignored as a possibility because of this if statement up here. Now, one thing that you can do, though, is you actually do not need an else statement. If I wanted to, I could just have a series of if statements along here, and then each one of these will be considered independent of all the other earlier if statements. It's only when there's this else that this if statement here gets tied to this if statement, as in, if this one's true, then this one will not get run. So that happens to be an important thing to consider is that you do have that option also. In summary, the if-l statement really allows you just in order to make decisions. So it allows you to decide, do I want to do A or do I want to do B based upon some other condition? Though I don't expect you to be fully comfortable with these yet, we're going to be using them a lot in the future. So there's plenty of opportunity for you to get more experience and see more of what we're going to be doing with conditionals and flow control in the upcoming episodes. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful day.